Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Brian Nearing from Christ the King Lutheran Church up in Hutchinson, and I bring you greetings on behalf of the good people at Christ the King. Um, We've really enjoyed this Lenten partnership that we've had, and I know that uh, they really enjoyed having your Pastor Brian there as well a couple weeks ago, and so uh, I believe he's down in Fernando tonight, correct? Yeah, because I think we have Pastor Aaron from Fernando for the next two weeks, and so we get quite the treat there. So, But welcome to worship this evening. Um, And yes, we have one more week of Lenten services, and I believe Pastor Brian Lauer is completing his time here. He'll be here next week for our last week, and then uh, we'll be moving into Holy Week. And so as we do so, let us do so um, with repentant hearts, remembering the good news that Jesus Christ has died for us, and the salvation that he has wrought through his death and resurrection. And so with that, would you please rise as we begin our worship service and turn to hymn 526. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The third article of the Creed professes our beliefs about the Holy Spirit and the Church, the small catechism teaches. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and preserved me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and preserves it in unity with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily forgives abundantly all my sins and the sins of all believers. And at the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and will grant everlasting life to me and to all who believe in Christ. This is most certainly true. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, using the word of God, the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and preserves us in true faith. Flood us with the Holy Spirit so that our lives would be filled with true and vibrant faith binding us together and to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace.
a pagar. Our first reading comes from Exodus chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me what is his name, what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. The word of the Lord. Our psalm comes from Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possessions. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling, kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, beginning at verse 53. And they said, Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's something in a name, isn't there? We've all met people who, upon learning their name, witnessing their character, you simply go, yep, that guy's a John, or a Steve, or even a Brian. Names carry meaning. They carry judgment based on our history. They carry weight. Names recall memories of people who share that same name, either for better or for worse. Their behavior, their attitude, and I'm sure there's many things that we do. I mean, society does this, right? We label people. We call people a Karen or a Chad, and I'm sure there are others that I've been called, especially by my confirmation kids. And one of the favorite stories I have about names is it comes from my children and it involves the name of my son. Um, Now, I'll admit, I don't remember the exact situation that this happened in, but I do remember he was telling somebody his name. And so he went, my name's Tommy, 
or Thomas Oliver Nearing when I'm naughty. There's something in a name, especially when that name is your full name, spoken by your parents in disappointment or anger. And in our gospel lesson, it's easy to miss, but we actually hear Jesus' full name. Only it's not said by Mary or Joseph. It's not even uttered by one of the disciples in disappointment or astonishment. It's not even uttered by the Heavenly Father. No, Jesus himself gives us his full name. In fact, um, this name reveals a truth that forever changes everything we think we know about this Jesus of Nazareth. It challenged the religious expectations of the crowd who were looking for their Messiah, wondering if this Jesus just might be the one. And even though our gospel reading ends where it did, if you go on to read the rest of this chapter of John, you find out the people actually pick up stones and they seek to stone him and kill him right on the spot because of what he said. And you might be wondering, Where in the world in this reading did Jesus say a name outside of Abraham? The English doesn't give us a lot of help here. But Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In Greek, it's ego a me. I am. That is the name. Jesus reveals to the people. It's the name that he's claiming. He's not simply arguing that he's old enough to have known and seen Abraham, this man who's not even 50 years old. This isn't just a bad translation. In Jesus' words, he's actually making a claim that is immediately thought to be blasphemy. The people understood quite well just what he was saying, and it's a truth that we sadly miss too often when we read this text. Jesus declared that before Abraham was born, I am. It's the divine name. He is claiming that it is he who called Abraham, who chose him to be a father of many nations. It is he who wrestled with Jacob all night. It is he who spoke to Moses out of the burning bush and gave him the name, I am who I am, who led Israel with a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. This Jesus, the one whose name means the Lord is salvation, it's Jesus in the Greek, it's Yeshua in Hebrew, his full name is I am who I am. It is Yahweh, the Lord. God Most High, the Almighty. And such a truth has divided the church. It's caused schisms, and it's actually incredibly difficult for us to know and believe. In fact, according to a study, over half of the American church today doesn't believe this as of 2022 from the State of Theology study. They attribute to Jesus some level of divinity, some level of holiness, but they fail to worship him as God. And even in our own faith lives, the truth of who Jesus is often gets lost in the wide variety of opinions and beliefs about who he actually is. Every Lent, if you watch the History Channel, you're going to be bombarded with so-called educational TV programs that want to uncover the real Jesus, the historical Jesus. And we've all ho- I think we've all seen the ads, or at least I'm sure you've heard about them. If you watch the Super Bowl, we know about a Jesus who gets us. The billboards are still out there that exist that warn of eternal damnation, where Jesus is the only escape from hell. And it seems that every popular preacher that you can find on television um, has has their own spin on just who Jesus is. They endlessly debate his worth as a self-help guru, life coach, a loving affirmer, or a lifestyle damning judge, the new Moses, or simply one manifestation of God that we can't put in a box. We treat Jesus like an impotent gentleman 
a great teacher, loving grandfather, basically anything other than who he says he is. But the beautiful truth is that Jesus is not subject to who we think he is, who we want him to be, or who we even believe him to be. Instead, he simply is who he is, like it or not. And because of that truth, we actually have hope. Because Jesus is the same God who revealed himself to Moses. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God who called his people and brought them into the promised land out of slavery in Egypt. He is the same God who rescued Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace and who closed the mouths of the lions so that they would not harm Daniel. He is the same God who delivered Goliath into the hand of David and who similarly rescued David out of the hands of his enemies, who made him a promise of a never-ending kingdom. He is the same God who fought his people's battles, who parted the sea so Israel could walk across it on dry ground, who breathed life into the very valley of dry bones. He is the same God who saved Noah and his family from the flood, preserving life on earth in his great mercy. He is the God who brought Nineveh to repentance with a simple word from the prophet Jonah, who lays low the proud, who lifts high the humble. He is the same God who spoke a promise through his holy angels to a young virgin that she would conceive and give birth to a son who would be Emmanuel, God with us. And he is the same God who then took on flesh, humbling himself to be born of that same virgin in fulfillment of the promise made to her, made to David, made to Abraham, made all the way back in the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve, that there would be born one who was promised, who would crush the head of the serpent while his own heel would be bruised, who by his stripes would heal the nations of their sin, who would bear their iniquities. Jesus is the God who abounds in steadfast love and mercy, who is jealous for his people, and who willingly bears the wrath of sin that all of creation deserves upon the cross. He is the God who is your God, the God who takes your sin and who suffers death for you. Truly, truly, Jesus said to them, before Abraham was, I am. He is the God of both the Old and the New Testament. The God who is revealed in his word to be God for you. The God who claims you as his own in the waters of baptism. Joining you to his very cross where he bears for you and that he bore for you and he raises you in the promise and assurance of eternal life. And so now, because of the name Jesus claims, you have a new name. You're not simply called something like Tommy or Thomas Oliver Nearing when you're not being very good. But your new name is Christian. Child of God, you are marked and sealed with the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are now called Beulah, married, as Isaiah says. You are now called Hephzibah, my delight is in her. You who were once not a people are now God's people. You who were once Gomer are now the bride of Christ, clothed in his righteousness, your sin and your unfaithfulness cast from you as far as the east is from the west. You bear the name of the one and only God for all to hear and for all to see. And there is something in a name. There's something in your name Because you aren't only a John 
a Karen, a Chad, a Mavis, a Sarah, a Barb, a Rick, a Scott. No. Instead, all of those names now bear witness to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. All of those names carry a new meaning. No longer defining you by who you say you are or by who the world says you are, but defining you based upon who Christ says you are. A redeemed child of God, clothed in his own righteousness, filled with the Holy Spirit, forgiven, washed, made new in the hope of the resurrection. Truly, truly, Jesus says, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, would you please stand as together we confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious and almighty Father, we give you thanks that you in your mercy sent your Son to take on flesh, to bear the cross, to die and to rise again so that we might have forgiveness and life in and through him. Help us to believe this wonderful truth that we have heard this day, that Jesus himself is one with you, the Son of God, second person of the Holy Trinity, God for us. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you would give your wisdom and heavenly grace to your church. We pray that you would, by their faithful service, uh, serve our neighbors that live around us. We ask that you would bless us that faith may abound and your kingdom would increase. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we give you thanks for the partnership that we have with Zion. We give you thanks for the partnership that we have with uh, St. Matthew's, with Christ the King, with faith. We ask that you continue to bless our brothers and sisters, uh, no matter where we might worship, as we enter Holy Week in just a few short days, in two weeks. We pray that we would all come before you that we would look to the cross where you have given us life and forgiveness, and that we would give you thanks for such a mighty and great gift. Lord, in your mercy, send the light of your truth into all of the earth, Lord, and raise up faithful servants of Christ to labor in the gospel here and everywhere. Bless all missionaries who throughout the world who share the good news with those who do not yet believe, We ask that you would give them patience, perseverance, that through everything that they would stand firm in their faith, confessing the truth of the love of Jesus to all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would be with all people who are sick, all who are ill. We pray for this community of faith at Zion and ask that you would be with her members who suffer from illness, who grieve the death of loved ones, and for all who we now name in the silence of our hearts. Bring healing, bring peace, bring comfort, and bring the assurance of the resurrection from the dead through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray through the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Praise be to God.